Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about line work and watercolors and I think that I I might have found the perfect solution for myself at least. I'm gonna talk about it, talk about the pros and um, yeah I'm actually really excited about it. Uh, this painting though that I'm working on it is actually going to be the postcard for November and if you'd like to have a print of this then make sure to sign up for my Patreon by the end of today if you're watching when this video goes live. It's for the end of November. So I do have that link down in the description that'll take you over there and it will have this painting available at my shop as well if you'd like the original. But anyways, uh, the line work for watercolors. So this is something that I have been struggling through for a while now. I have been talking about it where I haven't found a perfect solution and I absolutely love line work and I love line work with watercolors. For so many reasons though, I haven't been happy with other mediums in the past. And I feel a little, <laughs> I feel a little silly because the thing that just worked so beautifully in this piece and I absolutely loved the process was something that I had tried in the past and I barely even remember why I decided that it didn't really work and why it wasn't something that I wanted to continue trying. Uh, but to stop beating around the bush, the technique, the medium that I use for the line work is gouache. It just seems really obvious. A lot of people use watercolor and gouache together and I, specifically I'm using the acryla gouache which is basically kind of like a type of acrylic. It's like an opaque watercolor but because I'm using the acryla gouache it's actually pretty water resistant, almost waterproof I would say. Um, if you're using artist gouache then that type of gouache is actually reactivatable with water. So a lot of the techniques that I like to use that that I want out of my line work isn't nearly as applicable with that type of gouache, but I never actually tried it with that gouache. So that was never the issue. Looking back at it, I think that that maybe really the biggest issue that I had with it was that I struggled to to create the right consistency of paint to water to create really smooth lines when I'm actually painting on top of the more textured watercolor paper. And and I struggled with keeping it wet enough. I felt like it was drying out all the time. I I don't know. <laughs> Looking back, that's all I can really think of. But when I used it in this piece specifically, it just, it worked so well. I didn't struggle with creating the right consistency, like almost at all, really. I, I don't know. I think that, and maybe it was just that the last time I tried it, I think it was before I had really tried much oil painting and oil painting really forced me to to pay more attention to to the consistency of the paint that I was mixing with the mediums and the paint thinners. It, that is currently the biggest thing that I need to figure out with oil painting. Um, so yeah, I don't know if it's that. I don't know if it's just a fresh, a fresh experience and now doing it this time, it just worked a little better. I, I work better with it and now I want to continue doing it. I don't know, but let's talk about it. <laughs> let's talk about some actual pros of, of using gouache for line work like this. The big one, probably the most important one for me is the color adaptability. I can mix exactly what I want. I can mix it so that it matches the thing that I'm painting and even better than what I have used in the past is that I can actually mix lighter colors as well. So when I was using, and that's, I say when, I mean, I did half of the line work of this piece with the watercolor line work technique. And that's just where I use watercolors and I mix it extra thick. And then I use that for the line work. There are a lot of issues with that and I wasn't happy with it. It was a frustrating process and I didn't enjoy the final outcome as much as I wanted to. But uh, the, the big drawback with that is that because it's based on watercolors, which is transparent, I wasn't able to mix lighter colors because if I lightened it with water, which is what you do with watercolors, it just got more transparent, which means that it didn't cover up the edges of shapes, which is a big part of line work is that it tightens and sharpens up those shapes. So it was really frustrating to feel very very stuck in using only dark colors for line work when I wanted to really adapt to the situation. And with, with gouache, it means that I can, I can actually go in with the white paint and 
create that same viscosity, that same paint mixture of paint to water, but it can be really white or light. And that allows me to put line work in on areas that I want it to be lighter than the object or when I was working on the wolf, which is the main part that has the line work with the gouache, eventually I start working in areas that I fade out. And I actually just did that by adding just a little bit more water to it where it was at. That wasn't an issue with the transparency thing, but it, it allowed it to be a softer, lighter shade, which helped create this direction of light from one side to the other. It was a lot darker on the left side of the wolf and then it got a bit lighter on the right side to help reinforce where the light was coming from. Once I was able to figure out how much water to mix with the paint to get a really smooth, consistent line, that just completely changed the experience. I think that I remember when I tried it before, I think I was worried about adding too much water because then it did start making it more transparent. And I think that I just, I started getting timid with adding the water and then I ended up with really much too thick paint for what I wanted to do with it. So then the line work would break off with the texture of the paper and I wouldn't be able to get smooth lines and then it would just be a really frustrating process. But with enough water, it still remained very opaque but it flowed really smoothly off of the brush. And I, I just loved the process in this piece. And it was actually just a total, just on a whim, I decided to do the line work like this for, like I mentioned, half of the piece. I think I did most of the line work for the human character with the watercolors like I usually do. And for whatever reason, I pulled out the gouache. I had been thinking how frustrated I was with this process of doing line work with watercolors, how I wasn't happy with it now that I had come back to watercolors after a bit of a break. And I, I don't know, I guess I decided to experiment again and I'm very, very happy that I did. It's, it's like one of those things that I don't know why I didn't think to put more time and more thought into it sooner. So many people use gouache with watercolors so beautifully. I think a large part too is in the past I've used gouache to try to recover mistakes in my watercolors and I only pulled it out rarely so I wasn't very comfortable with gouache and then when I did use it I, I think I tended to use it far too thick and it was really textural and you could see the brush strokes which I find incredibly frustrating so I think I just had a, a fear of using it because it felt like it de the quality <laughs> took the quality down of my piece that's what i'm trying to say and uh, i i think that a large part of it is just me learning the medium learning how to handle it so that i can get really smooth coverage from it and these really smooth lines another really big positive as far as comparing watercolors with gouache is that gouache actually stays matte with watercolors especially the the colors that I mix with a lot of Payne's gray, which tends to be a lot of them when I'm doing the line work because it's one of the darkest paints that I own. It gets really shiny kind of. It has this weird, weird sheen to it in the light when you add too much pigment and not enough water. And I really, really do not like that effect. It's, it makes it look like there's something not quite right with the painting, <laughs> like something needed to be shifted. But with the gouache, I could go that dark that equivalent, but it was matte. It didn't have a different sheen to the rest of the painting, which was exactly what I wanted. I was so happy with that. So I actually went over all of the areas that I had done with the human character and went back over it with my, my gouache mixture that I had so that everything was mattified. And I mentioned this earlier, but a big thing that I really love about this is that it is mostly waterproof and the experiences that I've had with this and the little testings that I have done is that once it's down and dried, it pretty much didn't budge with, with water on top of it. I don't know how many washes you could do over it before it starts deteriorating. If it does, that's just an experience thing. I'll have to use it a bunch more, but it did allow me to do washes on top of the line work and the line work did not move in this piece, which is amazing. When I do line work with watercolors, some of them stay better than others, but pretty much always, if I have to do a wash on top of it, 
there will be a bit of bleeding. And that's really frustrating because I want to be able to adapt areas all the way up until the end of the painting, even after I've done line work. Sometimes I'll think that an area is done and then revisit it and not being able to do it as cleanly as possible is a really frustrating point for me. But having this basically waterproof line work that's there, it's sharp, it doesn't really budge, is such a game changer. It really does mean that I can just continue working on a piece and continue tweaking and fixing and and I love that because a lot of times I don't know exactly what a piece is going to need and being able to be open to shifts and changes is such a big deal. With this piece, the background, I ended up doing another wash over all of the background and I was much happier with the value and how it played out with the rest of the piece. And I did have to be really careful around the little strands of hair that I had painted for the human character. I had to go in so carefully to make sure that there was the least amount of bleed possible. The original of this painting is available at my shop and the print of this is going to be the November postcard. So if you'd like a print, make sure to sign up as quickly as possible because November 30th is going to be the last day for you to sign up and get this postcard. And that's for all of the Malachi and Citrine tier patrons. And of course, I want to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are absolutely incredible. You are amazing for sticking by me as I've been working on the Memento Mori artwork, which has been really amazing, but also very distracting. But, but anyways, thank you guys so much for that. And I will see you guys next time with some more painting.